Welcome to Six Figure Souls, Doing Good and Making Money, the weekly podcast where I highlight entrepreneurs who have left the grind and designed businesses in alignment with who they are. This is a very special season nine where I'm interviewing my co-authors of our third collaborative book, The Ultimate Guide to Leaving Your Legacy. I'm your host, Camille Miller, an internationally known business strategist and mentor, founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and Soul Professional Society. Today, I have in my studio, Paul Taubman, and he is the Chief Online Strategist for Digital Maestro. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, Camille. It's always great speaking with you and spending time with you. So thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. So I want to, first I'll mention that you are a co-author in our last book, Leaving Your Legacy, and your title is Taking Nothing for Granted. The Legacy Leaving Magic of Gratitude in Life and Business. Absolutely love that title. Thank you. So tell us, I first want to start off with, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, what you do, and then we'll dive into your chapter a little bit. Sure. So describing me, I'll start professionally. My, I'm a business owner. Uh, my company is called Digital Maestro. Uh, we do website and marketing for um, small businesses around the country here in the U.S. and as well as in six different countries in the world. So uh, that's the passion. That's the fun. Uh, I, as you said, I left the grind uh, 27 <laughs> years in the insurance industry where I was in, involved in tech and systems and development and programming and all that kind of stuff. I enjoyed it, but it was a grind. So I started my own business and we've been doing this now for about eight years. Um, currently, Actually, I have to pause for a moment. I was about to say, I'm currently living in New Jersey, which I am moving down to Florida and um, continuing another chapter, not a book chapter, but another chapter in my life living down there. So awesome. looking forward to that, the fun, the excitement, the challenges and everything that goes along with relocating. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand as I didn't relocate as far, but also moved last year and I still have boxes. I have declared this weekend my get shit done weekend, and I am just gonna start like, okay, you've been here almost a year. Let's uh, let's finish getting ready here. Totally get that. Yep. So, so um, uh, you decided to be in the book of leaving your legacy, and my first question is, what made you decide to write a chapter for with you know for us with this uh, title? Yeah. So. A couple reasons. I'll start with the the easiest one that you probably make you chuckle, right? It was FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> this is book number three. I didn't participate in the first two, although, you know, I did um, leave a review for it. There's mention of it. So I am yep. in the first two books, but, yep. you know, I don't say, oh yeah, I'm in a book, right? Yep. Now I can say I am in the, the third and Maybe final, I don't know, yeah, uh, of the uh, third of the series for sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I thought that I wanted to do that, um, to share what I do with gratitude. So, you know, when you talk, you asked me to talk about myself, I, I just mentioned the professional things. Um, the gratitude piece of my life, which people find for some reason surprising, you know, that here I am, this technical kind of person, <laughs> yet I have this you know, the spiritual side, the compassion, the, the social, the, the whole, the gratitude part of me, people go, Oh, that's kind of weird. Like they usually don't go together. And I was <laughs> like, well, the gratitude has been there longer than anything else. So I think it's a good idea to show people that you can mix them too, and they can be integrated and coexist together because it's the gratitude piece that has helped me become successful with my business, with the team that I have and just continuing on with that. Yeah, total, so. total belief in that whole thing. I have been following you in your gratitude, your daily gratitude series yeah. probably for three years now. And I still wake up every day to look at it. That's the first thing I do before I get out of bed. Well, thank you. I look at that. Isn't that yeah, so that on? started... There's a blog post out there on the site, all about gratitude.com, mm -hmm. where I talked about the origins. And by now it's, it's got, I've been doing this in some way, shape or form for at least 30 years, 
with quotes and sending things out with gratitude. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. long time. I'll share something else about you. It just dawns on me. I saved one of them and it's the first quote in the book. I actually saved it for my chapter Ooh. when I saw it. Um, let me see if I, oh, I didn't, nope. I was going to see real quickly if, um, when I saved it, if I can tell you what day it even came out on, but I don't want to take the time to look at it, but it's actually in my chapter and it, and it came it from, oh, here it is. Quote? Yeah. At times our own, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lit our flame within us. Yeah. Albert Schweitzer. 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 Yeah. yeah. And that was from December 5th when I had, um, I hadn't even recruited for the book yet, but I knew that the last book was coming and I saved it in my little book file. And that's where that is highlighted in my chapter. Cause I felt like leaving your legacy was about all of those people that touched you along the way and leaving your legacy is all those people that you touch along the way. And that's mm -hmm. a lot of what my story was about that even without thinking we are leaving a legacy. So we should be intentional about it. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing that I absolutely love about him as well is, I don't know if you know who he is. He was a French um, Frenchman. He was an organist, uh, philanthropist, um, philosopher. He's also a, a doctor. And, you know, he was back, I want to say, he was born in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when I first found out with the music, you know, my digital maestro is my company. So there's that music part of it and the thing. So this is, you know, he's well known and has a lot of quotes out there. And, you know, when I saw the quote, I was like, oh, I know that quote. I didn't realize it came from by way of me, right? I take no credit for it, but by introducing it to you. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a big part of my day. So the listeners can, it's called what allaboutgratitude.com. They can sign up yes. for the, the daily gratitude. It comes right to your inbox. I love it. Mm -hmm. That's how I start my day every day. And I've been doing it's it for free. years. So that website That's was actually free. started started as just a passion of mine. And I always said, you know, people can have it, they can enjoy it, and there's no cost because there's nothing that I can think of that would be harmful from sharing gratitude. Yeah. It just makes everything better. Yeah, it does. It's it's very hard before you're in this place of gratitude to see how, if you just look at everything positively, how hard that is. Like to find gratitude in everything you do or celebrate mm -hmm. your wins every day is what I do. Um, and now years later, it's such a part of my life. Like it just is who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But when it's you who don't you be, yeah. But when you don't do that from the beginning, it seems like that's a stupid way to get ahead. <laughs> right? Right. But right. it really is. It's, and I, I do believe that when you give, you have to give before you get. And I think that's a part of scaling. It's a part of growing um, for any business. Like you have to give. And as as I teach, I'm always teaching that you you have to give. You have to allow people to know who you are and you know, be open and authentic and real. And that's what people are attracted to. Yeah. And there's so many different ways of saying that, right? Um as you give, so shall you receive. What goes around comes around. Givers gain, mm -hmm. right? It's just do unto others as you want to do. I think there's a component of that in every major religion. I'm not yeah. sure, but I know they always talk about it. And it's, yeah. it's yeah. good stuff. So true. So true. Um, so let's dive in and talk about your chapter a little bit without giving everything away. But you, okay. uh, I absolutely loved your chapter. Very inspiring. And an interesting story that I did not know about you after nine years, I think yep. we've known each other, nine years of friendship never came out, but, um, well, it was really just about you figuring out about your life and where you came from. And we will add that your dad was the director of the New York Philharmonic. 
Yeah, correct? he's conducting yeah. New York Philharmonic. He went to Africa by request of the State Department on tour for three months as a goodwill gesture to show that, you know, kind of share the, the musical yeah. um, prowess of the U.S. and just goodwill. Um, yeah, and that's that's where the musical background comes from, right? Yep. Growing up, being young, playing piano, and then moving on trumpet and, yeah. and you're breaking his heart. When I said I didn't want to go into music into college, he had, you know, Juilliard Insight, Rochester, uh, Eastman School of Music, uh, Boston Conservatory. And like, I think I want to do computers. And he was like, <laughs> what? I said, yeah, I think I want to do. He goes, okay, I'll support you in whatever you do. That's so, that's very important. I'm curious, do you ever pick up an instrument anymore? So the last time I played was out in public, I should say, was actually at my best friend's wedding. Oh, yeah, so nice. So I, I did play. play That's probably a while a ago. Yeah. yeah. Nothing yeah. on a regular basis. Now yeah. it's just, I play the radio. Ah, I like or that. Or Spotify or stream. Yep, That's what I play. I play Spotify these days. Do you? Yeah. Very nice. And uh, we should mention that's how your company name came to be too. Yep. Maestro, that's the, right? Sort of the yeah. backstory origins of digital maestro. Yeah. It's the musical background of things. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. So we always ask every um, um, writer in the book, well, I ask him a couple questions. And one is while you were writing your chapter, where you weren't new to writing, you've written chapters before for co authored books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this wasn't a new experience for you. Well, it was new in the sense that. You know, it was the other writing that I've done had been marketing or websites or mm. my story, you know, of how I started with things. This was more, I think this was the first time I wrote about me and my experiences and quite frankly, things that I didn't want to tell people about. Yeah. Right. There's personal things that really was, I was like, oh my God, if people find this like as I'm going through it, people find this stuff out. I was just like, oh, I, I can't. Like how embarrassing. That's, you know, special in the high school years, like yeah. where everybody's look, felt like everybody's looking at you and everybody's, you know, going, oh, evaluating and peer pressure and all that kind of stuff. It was, yeah, it was awful at the time. I can imagine. I can imagine. So now that you've written it and it's out there, and more people will see it. <laughs> How do you feel about the chapter itself? Like uh, like your experience of writing your story and putting it out there. Because I know sometimes it's fearful at first. And there are a number of, it always happens every single book that people are like, oh no, I want to pull it. I, I can't do it. It's going to be out there. You know, and then it's out there and they're like, whoo. I like my first chapter was like that, like, okay, it's out there. I can move on from here and grow. So I think for me, it was, it was a bit of validation almost. Okay. Because as you know, if, if you were to ask me or anybody talks to me, I'm like, you know, the phrase you're a hundred, hundred percent responsible for everything that happens in your life. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, that's a, conversation or debate for another time but I think everything that has happened to me I'm responsible for in one way shape or another because if I wasn't involved I would not have experienced it right so there's yeah. something that I'm contributing to that okay. so because of that idea or philosophy of I'm responsible I sort of own up to things that happen or go on or you know things that I don't like but in this case, even though I knew about it and I know I went through those experiences, I kind of felt like not my like I was just the victim of circumstances. I was just there along for the ride. Things right. were happening with my parents that, you know, it's just that's the way it was. How could I? Which is sort of a conflict to taking 100 100 percent responsibility. Well, you are 100 percent responsible for your reaction. That you de that happen. is definitely correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So along with that, with the reaction as well as you know being involved with it, writing it and putting it out there, 
kind of said, okay, now I am truly walking what I'm talking about. Your truth. As opposed to kind of covering it up and not telling people, not yeah. bringing it up and exposing it or not, you know, sharing it with people. Yeah. You know, Very so. interesting. It was a great little story. Um, and then we always ask our co-authors to um, add a little lesson for the readers. Can you share a little bit about your lesson that you shared with readers? Yeah. So I think we, we kind of alluded to it and talked a little bit in the beginning where with gratitude, that will only make things better. Mm. And I'm not talking about ignoring things. Right. Because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, if this is happening, you know, you're sick. How can you be grateful for that? You're, you're just ignoring the symptoms. You're not doing this. I'm like, no, I'm not ignoring it. I'm addressing those. And I'm grateful that my body is fighting this infection. Or I'm grateful that I have this experience that I can learn from. Right. Um, so being grateful, you can't feel sorrow or shame or any other emotion as you're feeling gratitude, right? You can't have two <laughs> feelings of anything at the same time. Yeah. I never when you're of feeling yeah. the gratitude, you're feeling appreciation, you know, um, I think that's going to be helpful just moving forward with everything. So gratitude, it's like a skill, just like being a musician, right? You practice it, you get better. So doing things like, you know, you mentioned you wake up in the morning and you think about things that you're grateful for, you know, having a gratitude journal and actually writing those things down and not planning it, just waking up to say, okay, what am I grateful for? Even if it's something as I'm in this house, I'm sleeping in this house. I have a roof over my head. I have friends and family that support me, right? Whatever it is, how big or small, mm -hmm. I'm grateful that I'm able to write in my journal. Yeah. If anybody's ever broken their hand or had, you know, problems with it, you know, the things that we take for granted, so easy. Yeah. Rather than take things for granted, just feel that. Yeah. I love that. I started a habit. Oh, it's been months now. I don't exactly know how many months of, I text a friend three wins that I had every single day at, before I go to bed every night. And then three wins I want to have the next day. So it sets goals for the next day. Mm -hmm. And I do it. We've done it for months, but it makes you go through the day, no matter how difficult your day was. Like, cause yesterday I was sitting there like, what did I actually accomplish today? And you have to come up with three, <laughs> right? But it could be a little, like I had a great conversation or uh -huh. I was able to relax on my couch or I made a great cup of coffee. Like it doesn't have to be big wins. And it was really funny when I went, went on vacation recently, I was like, I'm not going to do it while I'm on vacation. And she was like, yes, you are. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you, are, you are absolutely doing this on vacation. And I'm like, what? She's, I was like, I'm going to be in a different time zone. She's like, I don't care. She's like, I'll see it when you get, when I see it. And you'll see mine when you see mine. He's like, she's like, but you're still going to do it. And it actually was great because even on vacation, I was grateful, you know, to be there, things I got to see, things I got to do. You know, one day I was like, I am so great. I was in Vienna. I was like, I'm so great. I slept like three hours in the middle of the afternoon while everyone else was out. <laughs> like, I was so grateful for this. <laughs> I was oh, like, I'll come back another time and see the city. But it's those little things. It's the little things. So I love that you're texting them to a friend and yeah. not just write it. It's like journaling to the next level because you're sharing it. You're putting yes. it out there to, to, to your friend at least. And it's getting to her or him. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And setting the goals for the next day makes you think, well, one, what's on my schedule or what do I want to accomplish? But sometimes when I'm writing my wins at that night, like I scroll back to see what, well, what were my goals? <laughs> Did I hit any of them? you know, because I just kind of do my day, but yeah, but gratitude, love it. Love your story. Gratitude, I think is so much a part of who we are every single day, but also a part of our legacy, mm -hmm. right? It, it, I think that's something to be known for in, in, for all of us, yeah. right? Leaving our legacy is really important. And I know 
um, both of us, because we're probably around the same age, we have so much more to live and do, but our legacy, anyone's legacy is what you're doing now in this moment, because you don't know when your last day is. So you want, you want to do things that are good and right yeah. and put impressions and do on things the just generation. For, just for the good of doing good without any expectations of, yeah. am I affecting anybody? Is this helping anybody? Because a lot of times you're going to do something for somebody that affects them that you'll never know that they do for somebody else that affects them that you'll never know. And it just becomes this, this whole ripple kind of th thing. Right. Right. Just do. I always say like when you pay it forward, it doesn't matter how you receive back because everything goes in a circle. You will eventually receive back and that's not why you do it. And just because mm -hmm. you're good to one person doesn't mean that's the person that it's coming sure. back from, right? It could come back in a totally different way. And, and, and just being in that mindset, I think is good. Like mm -hmm. the go giver mindset. Awesome. I agree. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much for being a co-author in my book. Thank you for inviting me and <laughs> letting me and putting up with me and all those things. I love it. Pleasure. If people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So we've talked about, you can go to the website, allaboutgratitude.com. You can sign up for the free gratitude burst that comes via email every day. Um, you like it? Great. Stick around. If you don't unsubscribe, right? that's fine <laughs> to each their own. And then on a professional way, uh, my website is digitalmaestro.com. That's digital maestro spelled. I don't know why I picked this word. This is the worst. I always have to spell I it have, out. So I have trouble spelling it. Digital maestro. M is in Mary. A-E-S-T-R-O.com. Digitalmaestro.com. And we can help you with uh, your website, with your marketing, with security. Basically, anything that you're doing online that affects what you're working on, we can help you with it. So. Awesome. And um, we do it gratefully. Yeah. I'll give a plug that you help a lot of my own clients and members in our community. Paul's also been a member of our community for a long time. And I love your work because I see it. I'm always like, oh, those are some great posts. They're always like, yeah, Paul's doing. <laughs> Thank you for very, that. Very good. You are welcome. Paul's information is also in our show notes. If you're driving, please wait for you to get home. And please. you can always reach us <laughs> if you need to get in touch with Paul. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you, Paul. That was and my pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. If you loved this interview, please share it with your friends and pick up our book coming out in September of 2024. You can also join others by checking out the soulprofessional.com and our soul professional community. A soul professional lives in a higher vibration, has an alternative approach to business and is here to help repair the world. Have a great weekend and we hope to see you soon. Thanks, Paul. All right. Thank you. Be well. Bye-bye.